Guys, I just said it the other day. I'm not so sure that this is completely over here in Santorini. And if you look at this earthquake map, you see that pink dot there pulsating. This is the area, right? We have Santorini here. This is the area where that massive earthquake swarm was happening. But also here in the last few days, we've always seen some earthquakes in this area. But why am I showing you this again? Well, let's scroll down in the list a little bit. This is all March 28th here in Europe. It's nine hours ahead from North America, most places, the West Coast. Look at this bugger here on March 27th, almost at 6 p.m., 4.5. And this is the location. It's closer to Santorini, but still within the normal range where we've seen that earthquake swarm. So six kilometers of depth and 4.5. And the reports that are coming in from Greece is that they're saying it was a powerful earthquake because six kilometers is still considered shallow and it was felt. And to me, the fact that we're still seeing magnitude four plus earthquakes, we just had one the other day. I'm not sure if, if it's still in that list. Um, let me check the last 10 days if we look at the earthquakes. Yeah, so that is interesting if we look at the last 10 days. Um, where is the 4.5? There is the 4.5. There is the latest one that just happened, a 2.5. This is also, there's still something going on. But as I said, the last 10 days, unfortunately, these green dots are hard to spot. I have to make it smaller than you see them better. Near Kameni, this is the area where we've seen the last eruption. It's a, an island that looks like full of lava, the magma chamber is underneath here. Santorini is a crater. And look at this, you could call this a little bit of a cluster. They're always appearing here in this area, Nea Kamini, but also in this area here. Unfortunately, now the green dots completely vanish because there's the green fields. So they should have chosen another color, but you see there's one here, 2.1, there's one here, 1.8, all of them shallow depth of two to 10 kilometers. That's considered shallow. So quite a few that were happening here. Is this a sign that we still have magma flowing out from that magma chamber underneath Santorini in that direction? Is this still happening? Why are we seeing the larger ones? Is this from fault lines that are here in the area? Of course, and we have the underwater volcano Colombo as well that has a land rise that could spread out some tension in the other areas. So, you know, that after such a massive earthquake swarm, we would still see some micro seismic earthquakes. Yes, but, you know, let's go back the last 20 days. There you see there's, there's way more, right? Um, but during the massive earthquake swarm, we didn't even have that many there. So the ones that you see there, they're just recently. So is something still flowing there? And why is it rumbling in the higher magnitude? So I would not declare that crisis over. They have opened up the archeological museum in Tira on Santorini again. They're getting ready for the tourist season. They're trying to reassure everyone but a 4.5, if I was a tourist and if I needed to decide whether I go there or not, better safe than sorry. This is not a recommendation. This is just my personal opinion. The first tourists are coming back. The first cruise ships are arriving back. And then Thursday night in Greece, Greece time, a 4.5 is striking off the coast of Santorini. And it was recorded that's northwest of Anafi. And the earthquake, guys, again, was strong. And 
Many scientists are saying it's marking the first significant tremor since the recent wave of seismic activity has led to that widespread concern and evacuations on Santorini. But we just had a few days ago a 4.1, but of course 4.5 is significantly larger. So our authorities alarmed again, our residents alarmed again. No immediate reports of damages or, Im or injuries, that's good. And yeah, we cannot do too much, right? We basically have to wait and see if this earthquake swarm is catching up again or what is this, right? Definitely, we can see on this graph here that the earthquake number has significantly decreased. What we're seeing here is the earthquake frequency over time in like one hour steps. So there you see it, it's not much anymore, but there are some on March 27th and now March 28th again. And the magnitudes are still high. That's what's interesting. What I find interesting is that um, officials have said that disaster response planning must take into account that psychological symptoms often do not appear immediately but may surface weeks after the event. And with the event, I'm speaking about this massive, massive earthquake swarm that was happening over weeks there. So this is quite a while ago. It's still rattling a little bit. So the question is, once we see these magnitude four earthquakes, does that, I don't know, remind the residents or scare the residents again? Because don't forget, thousands of residents had left the island and they're now returning and now they see another 4.5 again. So they might question their decision. Tourists might question their decision. The cruise ship lines might question their decisions to come back, which would be devastating for the local economy. All the people that live on Santorini, they mostly live off tourism and we have Easter approaching and the summer tourist season is also on the horizon. And businesses in the tourism sector are gearing up to welcome visitors. Schools have reopened again, allowing students to return to their classrooms. So if we look at all these developments, they suggest that everything's returning to normalcy. But is it? I question this when I see these earthquakes. And also other scientists and journalists are questioning this. They're also wondering, has the island truly moved past the recent wave of earthquakes? A Greek psychiatry professor has said, and he's an internationally prominent figure in the field of mental health. He has said that the impacts of such phenomena can be multifaceted and prolonged, especially since we always see some of these earthquakes again. And this cannot only be said of the residents of Santorini, we can also say that of the residents near Naples, in Naples, more than 6 million people that live between the supervolcano Campi Flegre and Vesuvius. And Campi Flegre is the problem right now that is having these large earthquakes, just a 4.6 and the Brady seism. So people are scared there as well. So if there are any ongoing major stressors, this can really affect people's mental health. And this prolonged seismicity that we had in Santorini and in Campi Flegre, where you always worried, is something collapsing above me? Will the volcano erupt? It's in both areas, dangerous, dangerous volcanoes. And it is well documented by research, and that's the problem for these areas, that any significant change in daily life requires individuals to mobilize their physical, mental, and emotional resources, and that can really drag on you. And then if these changes lead to tension, frustration, anger, or distress, they trigger what we call stress. And definitely the residents of Pozzuoli are in that stage right now. They're very angry, they're worried, they're, they're protesting. And if this is going on for quite a long time, in Campi Flegre even longer than in Santorini, 
the stressors accumulate over a short period and then individuals become more vulnerable to physical illnesses, mental disorders, and even injuries from accidents if you're permanently stressed out. And there's certain parts of the body that are more susceptible to stress-related illnesses, though the precise mechanisms that we could link cause and effect are not always clear, but I found it interesting because really imagine that it's continuously rumbling for weeks. So we could have stress-related illnesses that include digestive disorders, lung diseases, heart conditions, oral conditions like mouth ulcers, skin and hair problems, alopecia, and uh, also reproductive health problems. So this is something that should really, really be taken serious. And it also affects the brain, which could lead to mental health disorders, such as people could have anxiety, depression, nervous tics, and phobias. Makes sense, right? And recent research has shown that stress can even exaggerate Parkinson's disease tremors. And for these people, right, it's an existential threat. Can we continue to live there? Will I lose my home? Will a volcano explode? That's Italy and Greece. So the, the greater, and, and people in Grindavik in Iceland have gone through this as well. If you uh, follow my channel, you know what I'm talking about. If not, become a subscriber and check out my playlist. So the, the greater and the more severe the changes in our daily life, uh, the less capable the people feel of managing them and the more stress they experience and the higher the risk of developing one or more of these conditions, the higher is the risk of developing one or more simultaneously, that's even worse, of these conditions. There's study that indicate that between one third and one half um, of natural disaster victims that they may develop depression, anxiety, or post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. I think we should, we have to talk about this because we're following these disasters and these events. And I'm, I'm always trying to report about the people involved also, not only about the volcanoes and the earthquakes. And this PTSD can, many people don't even realize that they have it. It manifests through nightmares, flashbacks, and prolonged distress. So not only soldiers that hear, I don't know, a tire blow or something and they think it's an explosion. If something rattles, only if someone shakes a table, people might think the earthquakes are starting again. People could be, get memory loss, changes in appetite and weight. They could fear death, panic disorders, phobias, prolonged grief, sleep disturbances, outbursts of anger, and they could be very irritable. Nearly 10%, and that's a lot, of the population may require significant or ongoing clinical care. So thankfully, I think many of the residents left when this earthquake swarm started versus Italy. They didn't leave because this area is so highly densely populated. And where would they go? So many victims could recover within months. It also depends on what they went through, but others continue to experience symptoms for years. So yeah, guys, that was a little bit of an insight because, you know, I, I think it's important because we're always saying, yeah, they should leave and they should do this and how can they live there and how can they do that? I think you have to, or we should try to put ourselves in their shoes a little bit. I hope that was interesting for you guys. And if you liked it, please like the video, share it with your friends. And if you want to support the channel, I have a buy me a coffee site. Unfortunately, right now, all the coffees, they go not into me. Um, they go for the vet care of my dog, Apollo, my sick dog, Apollo. Um, many of you know what's going on. So thanks for supporting him with your heartfelt messages and with your coffees and supers. Um, we're all very, very grateful. And there is an update um, soon. I'll release it on my other channel. Uh, so guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe. 
click the notification bell and stay safe. Be prepared. I see you very soon, guys. Bye.